Hey, and welcome to the next video for the Machine Mark II series. Um, if you recall, in the last one, we talked about some ideas for working with patterns. And now in this video, I want to transition to some ideas for effects. Okay, so machine effects can be applied on three different levels. And these levels are shown by these tabs up here. So we can work on the sound level, the group level, or the master level. Now just a quick rundown of what these actually are. Um, the sound level is going to be an individual pad. Um, so this can be a drum sample, maybe like my snare, or an instrument, like my bass here, um, just an individual pad. Now the group level will be your collection of 16 of those pads. Um, so for instance, if I wanted to work with my whole drum group, I wanted to put an effect on every single one of those sounds, um, instead of going through every sound and placing it on each sound tab, I could apply it on the group level, and that will affect all of these sounds within the individual group. Um, so you can do that in between your different groups here, and those will be limited to the group, but they will act on every single sound within that individual group. And then finally, we have our master level here. And as you might be able to guess, this is going to affect every little bit of audio in your project. It will affect every single sound and every single group. And this will most likely be reserved for mastering effects, maybe some light compression, some limiting, something like that. Um, but anyways, we have those three different levels to work from. So first of all, I will start with a sound example, and I'll be working with my drum snare right here. So what I want to do is just add a transient master to the snare. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and select the sound that I want to work with, my snare. Now that this pad is highlighted, I can go ahead and add the effect. Now before I go ahead and do that, I want to make sure I have an empty slot in the effects chain. Um, over here, if I'm on the plugin button, I can see that the sampler is the first one showing. So if I were to load an effect right now, it would overwrite the sampler and I wouldn't actually get any sound. That's not what we want, obviously. So what I'm going to do is just press this arrow here, that'll load up an empty slot, and you can see it says none. So we are ready to load up an effect. And to do that, we're going to enter into the module browse menu. And this is where we, um, you can enter this by pressing the shift button and then browse. You can see it says modules up here. And so this will be a, a menu that we're kind of familiar with seeing with the browse menu that I talked about in an earlier video. Um, but here we have a, a, um, an option to change between internal, um, NI, and external. Internal will be the effects that come with machines, so they're, they're stock effects here. External, or first of all, NI, will be um, Native Instruments' other plugins. So for instance, if you grab their, their holiday giveaway plugin replica, you can find that here in the NI section. And then finally, external will be where you find um, any of your third-party effects. So I have the Waves Silver plugin here, um, the, the plugin bundle actually, and that's where all of these ones show up over here. But for now, I'll just work with the, the uh, internal internal section here, just because I know everyone watching this video has these same effects. So I'll just go down and find some random effect. Maybe I'll work with Transient Master here. Once I have the effect selected, I'll press Load, and then press the Browse button to exit that menu so we can work with our effect. And you can see now that uh, that slot that usually said None, or that said None before, now says Transient Master, and we have our options to work with the effect. So I can go ahead and maybe sharpen up the attack take away some of the sustain, mess with any of these parameters. If at any time I want to compare the affected sound to the unaffected sound, I can press the shift button here and then bypass, and that will momentarily disable the plugin while still keeping it loaded. So there it is, not affected. There it is with the effect on it. That's a really nice way to see um, what your sound sounds like with the new effect loaded on and see if you want to keep the effect, maybe change some of the parameters, anything like that. Also, if you want to remove the effect, go ahead and press remove with the shift button held down. And then you also have this option to move it. Um, if, you, if you load some more effects in, um, you can work around with that. Um, so that covers it for the sound, um, a nice way to load effects there on the sound tab. Uh, for working on the group level, it's a similar process. So for instance, if I want to load a filter on my group, I'm going to make sure I'm on the group tab here. And then again, make sure we have an empty slot. And it's nice because the, the first slot in the group is not occupied by that sampler as it was in the sound tab. And um, we just have an empty slot to begin with. So all we have to do is go ahead, press shift and browse. Um, we're back in our module menu here and then find whatever we want to work with, say our filter, load that up, exit browse mode. And then we can see filter showing up in our menu here. And we have all the options that correspond to this filter. So now I can go ahead play around with that, and then if I play some more sounds in the group, I can hear that, yes, indeed, all of these are affected by that filter. So our group affected what we thought it would. Good. Um, now we can also do the same thing for our master effects. Again, it's the exact same process. Uh, just choose the master level here. Uh, I have a plugin here already, so I'll go ahead and choose a, a new one, shift and browse, 
and then find one that I like, load it up, and then everything will be exactly as you're familiar with. Uh, same process, just the only change will be what level you'll be working with. Now, if you start working with these effects some, and you, and you start really getting comfortable with them, you might ask yourself if it's possible to record parameter changes in real time. Let's say if we're working with this filter, wouldn't it be cool if we could have the filter sort of come down in the middle of the track and then go back up and, and have that actually linked to the pattern, have that recorded in? Well, yes, that is possible, um, and you can do that with something called automation. Now, automation will be, will be possible for any of these parameters linked to the knobs here, so um, I can hold down this auto write button here make sure the track is playing back and then turn the knobs. And any of those changes that I make while the track is playing back will be recorded in the actual pattern. So it's a nice way to, to make those parameter changes and have them linked to your patterns. So I'll go ahead and do an example for that. Um, let's go through the process. First, make sure I'm on my group level here, working with the filter that I want to automate. And I'll be working with the cutoff frequency over here. Now I'll be working with my first pattern right here. So everything is set to go. All I have to do is play back the track Hold the automation right button and then turn the knob. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. So you can hear as the pattern comes back and loops around that those, those changes that I made are actually in the track. They're playing back in the same time as I recorded them. Now you might have noticed when I was recording this, it showed percentage change and not an actual cutoff frequency value. And the reason for that is because the way machine handles automation is that it's going to be recording changes relative to your initial value. So now if I just turn this value down, the same relative changes will happen in terms of percentage, um, but the starting point will be different. So. It's a little tricky to understand without actually trying it on your own project, so um, just, just try that out and you'll uh, you'll soon get the hang of it. Um, but the thing to note is that um, you can change this initial value and then the automation will stay the same. It's just going to be the same percentage change relative to that starting value. If at any time you don't like the automation you recorded, not a problem at all. You can press the shift button and then pad 10. That's going to clear your automation and you'll be good to go. Another thing that I have uh, a lot of questions coming in about is that if you record automation for one pattern, your other patterns are also affected. So for instance, uh, I recorded it on the first pattern, but if I go to my second pattern here, some of those, it's not too easy to hear, but some of those high frequencies are cut off. It's more apparent if I, if I started the filter down a little bit lower. And there you can hear that the automation or the effect is actually changing the sound of this other pattern as well. And so the reason for this is that automation is going across all of your patterns. It's going with that initial value of the effect like I talked about. Um, so whatever you have your effects set as at, at the beginning, it's going to be applied to all of your patterns. So the easy way to do that is just record, the easy way to get around this change is just record new automation patterns um, for this different pattern. So all I have to do is just do the same thing, play it back, hold on the automation right button, and then just record. So I'll try that now. <laughs> What I was doing there is basically just jamming the cutoff frequency as high as I could get it, and that in effect was turning off the filter. Now, it might be different for what you're working with uh, depending on the effects, um, but just keep in mind that this initial value that you have your automation recording from, and this starting point basically, will be applied to all of your patterns. Um, so that covers the automation, the automation points that I wanted to talk about. Um, it's really easy to layer different ones, so you can record automation for different parameters, not just one. Um, all you have to do is hold down the auto right button, turn the knob as it's playing back, and you'll hear those changes come around as the loop loops back. Okay, so that covers everything I wanted to talk about in this video in terms of effects and automation. Um, we can move on to the next one where I'll talk about some things relating to the grid and quantization.